Welcome to another episode of the Sober Minded Podcast. I just wanted to kind of spend some time talking about the election and the aftermath of the election and some of the theological implications of Donald Trump being president of the United States once again. He is the 47th president. And of course, this is an outcome that I wanted, an outcome that I think a lot of people wanted, obviously. You can tell by how many people voted for him. This will be kind of a short episode. And just so you have something interesting to look at, I'll be playing Sudoku on my phone. I'm not going to focus too much on doing a good job at uh, Sudoku. Something I can do while I talk to you guys about this, something you can watch while you listen to me talk to you. And so Trump has won, and of course, immediately the liberal meltdown has begun. I'm not going to show you any of the videos. I'm sure you've seen a lot of them already of liberals kind of uh, showing you what they think about Trump winning, which is... You know, they're really showing that they're uh, mentally unstable, they're unhinged. It's interesting that they are the ones that always respond like this. And you never see the right, uh, people on the right, responding like that. It's always people on the left. Again, that, that speaks to, that says a lot about the kind of people that support these kind of policies, these kind of radical left policies, sort of bordering on socialism. And at some points, it's even, you know, complete socialism that they're advocating for. And to put it in, you know, blunt terms, these people are crazy and their ideas are crazy. And in the long term, and even in the short term, their policies are not going to be uh, good for the country or good for the people of America. Of course, Trump's policies will be good for America. And we're going to see that pretty soon. I think all the people that are, you know, people that are angry that Trump is president, they're going to be living comfortably because he's, he's president. So it's sort of ironic that they, you know, hate that Trump is that Trump won, but ultimately they'll be living much more comfortable lives now that he is president. Although it might take some time for that to take place. Of course, you have the transition period between the administrations, and then you also have how long it takes for some of the legislation to come into effect. But I think soon enough we'll see uh, some really big changes happening to America. In a, in a positive way, in a positive direction, not any sort of negative changes that uh, the media lies about saying, you know, Trump becomes president, it's going to be fascism everywhere, he's a Nazi, he's a racist, and all these kind of things, all these, all these lies that they say about him. And once again, it is ironic that these people who hurl insults at uh, Trump will be benefiting from the comfortability of his presidency. But despite that, you know, it's better that all people live comfortably. I think that's one of the goals of electing a president. You want as many people living comfortably as possible. And especially to sort of take this to the Christian side of things. You know, as Christians, I think that's something that we really uh, want to advocate for is the preservation of life, as much life as possible, the protection of life, and also the comfortability, the comfortability of life, how comfortable it is to live in this country. And under Biden's administration, that was not the case. You know, I'm sure you know, gas uh, was increased greatly. Taxes increased greatly. Uh, the, the price of food increased greatly. The prices of a lot of things went up, and it was beginning to be a struggle. Uh, but on Trump's side of things, he did a lot of good. The problem was at the local level, the state level. And again, that's to the credit of the Democratic people in positions of power not the fault of the president but it was the democratic people and when there's a democratic president well you have the people the democrats in power at the lower levels are emboldened and they're able to pass legislations a lot easier and those are the ones that affect people the most the people that are on the lower levels uh, lower rungs of society so to speak lower class middle class so that's really where the damage comes from and we see that from senators and governors uh, passing laws and legislation, for example, in uh, California with Gavin Newsom. And so it's really a so it's really a negative thing that Democrats have any sort of position of power. That might seem kind of an extreme position to take, but when your policies harm uh, the American people, you know, they do more harm than good, then I think that position is necessary to take because well we, we want people that benefit we want people in positions of power that benefit Americans, that benefit the people and put America first. Ultimately, that is the biggest thing of having Trump as president is preserving 
the peace of America and also and also some of the other wars that America could enter into. Trump is definitely an advocate for stopping wars, whereas the other party wants to escalate wars. I also want to address some of the responses I've seen from Christians. And I sort of addressed this before, but I guess we've actually seen it play out after the results of the election. There's been a lot of Christians who, I guess, had anxieties about Trump being elected again, which I kind of addressed that, you know, no Christian should have anxiety about Trump being president. It's actually a good thing, not just for Christians, but for everybody in general. So this idea that there was Christians who sort of reluctantly voted for Trump or Christians who are reluctantly accepting that Trump is president, I think it's sort of a cowardly, kind of a selfish sort of demeanor that these people have. Uh, Because not only are they saying that they don't think Trump is the best candidate, but they're also saying that Trump would not provide the best results for the American people and produce a country that is more comfortable to live in and a country that actually upholds the biblical principles and Christian ethics that, uh, that this country was founded on. So really what it comes down to is what kind of a country do you want your fellow uh, people to live in? Ultimately, Trump is the candidate for that. And again, I think we're going to see that uh, very soon. Once he gets into office, we're going to start seeing changes being made and we'll see the positive effect that it has on the economy, on the economy and the infrastructure. And again, as Christians, I think we should want the best for our neighbor, right? And this is sort of a common grace that God allows rulers to get into power that benefit everybody in in a particular country or nation. So I think with Trump as president, it is kind of a common grace from God that all people will be able to prosper and be able to live comfortably than in the previous administration. And again, we'll go back to the statistics, the numbers that we had under the previous the previous time that Trump was president. But ultimately it was overall a positive thing for everyone when Trump was president. And some people really don't want to admit that, but at the end of the day, uh, even though people like to create this narrative that Trump is some sort of evil monster, at the end of the day, they're still going to benefit from his policies and his legislation. So it's sort of a great irony that they're still repeating these lies about Trump. And one more thing I have to address is some of the verses I see people throwing around, Christians, you know, posting these different verses in response to Trump getting the victory. Uh, of course, we've seen a lot of Psalm 2 being thrown around. The uh, popular psalm, Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? Kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord holds them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell the decree the Lord said to me, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, O kings, be wise, be warned. O rulers of the earth, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry and perish, and you perish in the way. For his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. So that's the entire Psalm 2. And I guess people, I guess Christians are using that, I guess because they don't feel totally comfortable with Trump, uh, Trump's victory. And so they kind of say this to remind themselves and to other Christians that have anxieties about Trump winning the election. They kind of use this as a way to comfort themselves and others that uh, God sits in the heavens and laughs at Trump and his plans his and his pride and sort of the character of Trump that we all know. We all know that Trump is certainly a flawed character, but the defining trait of Trump, I would say, is that he is honest and at least you know all his problems and all his flaws, whereas with other politicians, you have no idea how bad they really are and they're really good at hiding their flaws and putting on a character, putting on a show for their supporters. And that was certainly true of certainly true of Kamala Harris and, uh, you know, the kind of act that she was putting on totally phony, totally fake. The same goes for the other liberal politicians, democratic politicians that are really good at hiding their character flaws. Whereas Trump on the other hand, all his flaws are pretty much there for everyone to see. And that is due to the fact that the liberals really want to air out his dirty laundry. Furthermore, this idea that Christians are kind of ashamed 
that Trump has won the election, it is kind of, it's kind of redundant. You know, they say, okay, Trump's president, but God's still, God's still ruling over everything. It's really redundant. It's like, of course, God is still in control of everything, even to the point of allowing Trump and we might even add preserving his life from two assassination attempts that God is, has allowed Trump to get the victory and to be the president of the country. And still Christians are saying, well, you know, I don't like that he's president, but hey, God's still ruling, God's still reigning, and God laughs at Trump's plans, his prideful plans. And, but at the end of the day, God allowed Trump to be president. But there is another verse that I want to pull up, which is Romans 13, verses 1 through 7 where Paul writes, Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God. And those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities, resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval, for he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid. For he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. And this applies to anyone who's in any sort of position of power. They're put there by God uh, for the good of the people. But I would say this doesn't apply to certain rulers like, for example, the kind of ruler that Kamala Harris would be, or the kind of ruler that some sort of a leftist, socialist, communist dictator would be. The reason why this wouldn't apply to them is because, uh, is because the, words, the words used here is good and wrong. Good and wrong only make sense when there is a Christian paradigm or a biblical and objective paradigm set over the government. And so when a socialist leader takes place or takes over, what good and wrong means or the definitions being used are are categorically different than the objective definitions from Scripture. And the paradigm would be flipped upside down because under a communist regime, they would reward evil and they would punish good, which is not what the government is supposed to do. So under that paradigm, it would be far different. Good and wrong would be far different than what it would mean under an administration that is following biblical principles and Christian ethics. So for example, with the Trump administration, It is going to be more aligned with biblical principles and Christian ethics. Uh, But again, furthermore, I need to read 1 Timothy uh, chapter 2, verses 1 through 2, which says, First of all, then I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. So that's the point right there, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. So under which administration are we able to lead a peaceful and quiet life? Godly and dignified in every way. Regardless of who's president, you know, Christians are going to live for God, live for Christ, but peaceful and quiet life certainly, uh, peace and quiet can certainly be disturbed depending on who's, who's in power. So it does play a role to a certain extent, you know, who's, who's in power. But again, we have to go back to the state and even the county rulers, county authorities, state authorities, uh, they certainly play a larger role on the individual, depending on where you are and who's, you know, who's your senator, who's your governor, who's your mayor. That certainly plays a larger role on your daily life rather than the president. So local elections are uh, very important for that reason. But just consider that lead, leading a peaceful and quiet life godly and dignified in every way. Just consider that as you consider Trump being president and also consider the kind of comfortable life we're going to live and the kind of peaceful and quiet life that we're going to live under Trump's administration. Christians don't really have anything to worry about with Trump as president. I think things are going to be good, not just for Christians, but for non-Christians as well, even people who hate Christians and even you know the liberal lunatics who are melting down, they're certainly going to be living more comfortably than they were under the Biden administration. So things are definitely looking up and they're moving in a positive direction. And then uh, at, the, at the end of the day, 
will give all the glory to God and be content with the common grace that he's blessed all of us with here in America, with having Trump as president. And that's everything that I wanted to say. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and I'll see you in the next episode.